Okay, let's rationalize the denominator and simplify. Assume all variables are non-negative, so don't worry about anything under a, an even root. Okay, rationalizing the denominator means I have to turn the, the denominator into a rational number. So that means I have to get rid of the radical. Well, I know then that if I multiply, excuse me, if I multiply by the denominator by root 3, that'll turn that into 3, so I have to do the same in the numerator. So this becomes 6 root 3 over 3, and now I can simplify the 6 over 3, and this becomes 2 root 3. Okay, well, this one, I can actually simplify this first because I know that 12, this is actually the square root of 4 times 3x. So my denominator becomes 2 times the square root of 3x. So now I can just multiply by the square root of 3x over the square root of 3x. So that gives me 5 times the square root of 3x divided by 2 times 3x. So 5 root 3x divided by 6x. And you're done. Okay, if I'm looking at a cube root, I need groups of 3. Well, what I've got here is I've got two x's. But if I multiply by the cube root of x, that gives me the cube root of x divided by the cube root of x to the third, which in terms becomes the cube root of x over x. And you're done. Okay, if I want to rationalize the denominator and I have an expression, I want to multiply by the conjugate. So I have to do numerator and denominator, and the conjugate is the same expression with the sign change. So this would be 3 plus root 2. And whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So this becomes 3 plus the square root of 2, and this is a perfect square. So this becomes 3 squared minus the square root of 2 squared. So this is 3 plus the square root of 2 over 9 minus 2. which becomes 3 plus the square root of 2 over 7. Okay, similarly here, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 3 minus root 18. So 3 minus root 18. And this one may take us a little bit to simplify. Okie dokie, so this gives me 1 minus root 18 plus 3 root 2 minus root 36, all divided by 3 squared minus the square root of 18 squared. Okay, well, the square root of 18, of course, this is the square root of 18 is the square root of 9 times 2, which is 3 root 2. So this gives me 1 minus 3 root 2 plus 3 root 2, and the square root of 36 is 6, all divided by 9 minus 18. And I'm going to need 
need some more room down here. So this becomes, these cancel out. So this becomes one minus six. Oh, I'm sorry, this is three. One times three is three. So this becomes three minus six divided by negative nine. That's negative three over negative nine, which is one third. Okay, and let me. All right, so I'm going to multiply this by two minus root x over two minus root x. So this becomes, when I distribute here, this gives me 6x minus 3x times the square root of x divided by 2 squared minus the square root of x squared. Well, I can't do anything in the numerator, so this is just 6x minus 3x root x divided by 4 minus x. And I'm done. There's nothing I can do with that one. Okay, so perform the indicated operation. Write the answers in A plus B I form. Okay, so remembering that I equals the square root of negative 1 and I squared is equal to negative 1. Those are the big rules that you want to remember here. Okay, so if I'm adding these, I just want to add the real components. So this is going to be 3 plus 2 plus 3i minus 2i. So that gives me 5 plus i. Here I'm going to have to distribute. So this becomes negative 3i plus 5i to the second, plus 2 minus 4i. Well, 5i to the second, 5i to the second is equal to 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. So this becomes negative 3i minus 5 plus 2, minus 4i. So if I add the real components, that's negative 3. Negative 3 minus 4 gives me negative 7i. Okay, same thing here. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7i. So if it's asking it for a plus bi form, this is a minus 7i. Technically, either one would be fine. All right, if I want to do this, I'm going to have to distribute. So that gives me negative 12 plus 16i plus 6i minus 8i squared. So negative 8i squared is negative 8 times negative 1, which makes this plus 8. So now if I combine my like terms, the real components are negative 12 plus 8, which gives me negative 4. plus negative 4, negative 4 is positive 16. Okay, so that's plus 22i. Huh. 
Okay, so here if I have 1 minus 2, that gives me negative 1 plus 2i minus negative 4 plus 4i. So that gives me negative 1 plus 6i. Okay, well, before I add these together, I think the first thing I'll do is simplify this. 2 times 3 gives me 6 minus 10i plus 9i minus 15i squared. And we know that 15i squared becomes negative 15 times negative 1. So this actually becomes plus 15. So this becomes 6 plus 15, which is 21, minus i. And then to that, I'm going to add 2 minus 2i plus this. So 2 plus 21 is 23 minus 3i. Okay, so identify the parent function and transform the graph. All right, so the parent function. f of x equals x squared, which is the quadratic. So let's just go through the transformations and see what we can do. The 3 is a vertical stretch. by 3, and inside this is going to shift it to the right 2. Okay, so if I have the square root of negative x plus 5, the parent is f of x equals the square root of x, which is the square root. All right, so let's see what we're going to do here. Okay, this negative inside here means a horizontal reflection. And you can think of it that way, or you can think of it as across the y-axis. And then tacked on at the end here, if I have something tacked on, this that color. This is going to be a vertical shift up 5. And you can abbreviate those. OK, so the parent function here is f of x equals the absolute value of x. So that's the absolute value. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Okay, so the negative sign outside this is a vertical reflection.
which means it's across the x-axis. The two is a vertical stretch by two. And inside the function, this is a shift to the left four units. Now we didn't talk about this one in class, and you won't be expected to graph it or anything, but here your parent function is f of x is equal to the cube root of x. So this is the cube root. Okay, so let's see what's going on in this one. All right. The four inside the parentheses. That is a horizontal shrink since it's bigger than one. And then subtracting seven at the end is it shifts down seven units. Okay, and I think I'll pause here before I get on to the next one.